Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2022, the album, Dad AF. <clears throat> Rock on, gold dust, woman. Boost! How are you guys doing today? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> When I woke up this morning, very, very early, which I did, um, I never in a million years would have thought that this was going to be the video that I was going to make today. So let me tell you what happened. I actually have notes outlining this video because I don't want to miss anything that I want to say. And I always told myself that if I ever did make this video, um, that I was going to make it once, a one and done, and move on and be done with it. So... Here's the video. This is the video that I didn't make three years ago. And this is a video responding to Paige Christie. Um, I tweeted out today and I said, hold on a second. Oh, I don't have that actually. I just have the response to it. But I said something like, what do you guys want to hear me talk about today in my drama video? And Jennifer responded to me and she said, your response to Petty Page's apology to you. The video is called The End of Petty Page and it's about 20 minutes into the, into the video. And I was like, this is interesting. I didn't know that that page had made this video. Um, and so I was like, well, I should probably, if she made an apology to me, I should probably go watch this video. So Paige has posted, Paige Christie, fellow drama channel, um, has posted a over two hour video. And the video is entitled The End of Petty Page. Um, she posted it three days ago. And um, kind of the gist of the video is that she goes in and she goes to the very beginning of her career and she kind of goes through all of the um, uh, kind of negative interactions that she has had with people while she's been on YouTube and talks about her part in all of that. And because um, some, some people she kind of explains the situation and some people she apologizes. And, um, and I, I just want to say first and foremost before, getting into anything to do with this video. Thank you, Paige, for addressing this. Um, it has opened for me, um, I would say, an opportunity for me to kind of put some closure to all of this. So I want to say that. Um, and I will be addressing Paige and her part in this video at the beginning and at the end of this video. So, But in between, there are some things that I feel like I need to talk about on here um, regarding things that have come out three years ago through page and it's just it's it's crazy so anyway so that was how this whole thing started today right now like i said i hadn't seen a video so i went in and i watched it and i'm just going to go off of my notes you guys i will tell you um i had kind of resigned myself to the fact that i would never make this video explaining things and explaining situations i had kind of moved past that um, you know, I had come to peace with my relationship with Paige, which I'm going to talk about in this video. And I had moved through all of that and had done a lot of inventory on myself and other situations. And so I just really never thought that I would make this video. I thought, you know, this is just something of the past. I will tell you at the time, a lot of people encouraged me, um, a lot of other drama channels actually encouraged me to make a video responding and, um, I'll get into the reason why I didn't respond at that time because I think that was the one thing that people really wanted from me was that they wanted an answer. They wanted something to hold on to, some kind of like, this doesn't any of this make sense. Can you please explain this to us? But I'm going to get into that in just a second. So I went in and I watched this uh, video and at the end of Paige's part where she's talking about me, she said, you know, that she, kind of, I don't know how she said it, but she said, you know, I kind of wonder how Peter feels about all this now. You know, maybe he still hates me or whatever. Paige, directly to you. I do not hate you. I do not hold any animosity, any resentment, any anger, anything towards you whatsoever. Um, I, I, I honestly, I thought we had moved past this two years ago. Um, but thank you for everything that you said in, um, your, in, in your video. I want you to know I apologize to you as well. Um, I publicly apologized for the live stream years ago. Don't ask me what video because I don't know. I make too many of them. But I will publicly apologize to you again um, for my behavior in the live stream and in other interactions that we had. Um, I take full accountability for my behavior at that time. Um, and I wish you and your family all the best in the world and success with your further career and your channels and things like that. I, I, I have no negative feelings towards Paige Christie whatsoever. So I want to make that very, very clear before um, getting into this video because 
This video is kind of about my response to Paige, but it's also clearing the air about a lot of things that have been said about me in the last couple years, which Paige is part of, um, but I just kind of want to clear that up a little bit. So, um, Paige goes in and she kind of talks about our friendship. Um, it was interesting hearing <clears throat> Paige talk about our friendship. Um, I... I always wanted a friendship with Paige. I always wanted a friendship with a lot of these drama channels. You know, to be really honest, like, um, you know, I've always kind of felt on the outside looking in. And I, I have felt like that much of my life, not just once I started YouTube, but um, once I started in the drama commentary community and things like that. And, and I have had friendships with people, um, you know, through the years. And, um, and some of them were long-lived and some of them were short-lived and some of them I still have. And, um, but yeah, I did consider Paige and I friendly at that point. Um, and I thought she was the one that didn't really want to be that close to me. So, I, I, you know, it's interesting hearing her say that in, in, in retrospect. Um, she did say in the past very nice things about me and she did again in this video. And I just want to say thank you, you know, um, Paige for that. And, uh, I just, you know, it's sad to me when I watch a video like this because I feel like, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it's like all of those things that you know in retrospect that could have just been solved. I think this is such a great lesson to everyone not on YouTube, but just in our real world, you know, that many of these things can just be solved with a phone call or a conversation or whatnot, which Paige and I did have, so I'm going to talk about that. Um, so that was kind of our friendship, and I can remember when Paige started. I, I actually remember her YouTube channel starting, and I remember her coming into a live stream that I did, and, and I loved her, and I and I loved her, just her, her zest and everything about her at that time. And so it did make me sad that there was this breakdown between us, you know? It makes me sad any time that I have that with anybody, you know? Um, so yeah, so that was like kind of the beginning of it. Then over time, there was um, some kind of distance that happened between us. She says in there that she doesn't really remember how the beginning of the argument happened. Well, I do. And so I'm going to set this clear right now, Okay. I was in a video, if you guys all remember back in the day, I, all, I had all these stupid props. I still have stupid props, you know? But I had all these stupid props that I would put in my videos and things like that, right? And at one point, I had this one-legged Barbie doll, and I held her up, and I said something about, I named her Star Star, and I said something about, she's the new up-and-coming drama channel, and I made some, like, just a little snippet comment about, like, you know, she thinks she's got it all figured out, but she doesn't know anything. Anything or something like that. I don't even know what it was. Honest to God, okay? <laughs> on anything, on my mother's grave, I swear, on anything, okay? I did not mean Paige Christie or any other drama channel out there because there's been other people that thought it might be them too. I just was making a flippant comment about this Barbie doll and joking about the commentary community. It was literally nothing more than that. But I do understand how Paige thought that I was talking about her. And that was kind of like something we had talked about back and forth. And we had talked about that in DMs. Okay, so flash forward. Paige is on her honeymoon. I'm in a live stream right over there. And Paige came into my live stream and she was like, guest me. And I, so I guested her. And, um, you know, it'd be real easy for me to say in retrospect, I should never have guested her. But I, to be honest with you, as a person that feels like we only learn and grow from mistakes that we make, I'm very thankful for the live stream. And I'm going to explain that. Um, so we have this live stream and it got very heated. And um, I... So I had these DMs to, sh to show that I had explained to Paige that it wasn't about Star Star, right? Um, and so Paige was explaining to me very slowly and very calmly um, that, you know, she, like, what she felt about all of that. And I was talking over her, and I was very angry, and I was very heated, and I'm not proud of that moment. I'm really not proud of that moment. I'm ashamed of that moment. It's one of my lowest points on YouTube ever. <laughs> I don't like seeing the footage. Paige put some of the footage in this video, and I was like, oh, oh I don't want to watch this, you know? I'm very ashamed of that moment. And, you know, later people said that I was gaslighting Paige and I was doing this. I don't know. Like, that was never my intention. <laughs> my intention was to be heard, you know? Um, and I just, I didn't feel like I was heard in that moment. And that's not an excuse for any of the way that I behaved. I behaved horribly. I'm embarrassed and ashamed of that, that whole live stream. What came as a result of that, though, okay, because so many people saw it and so many people were talking about it, was that it forced me to take a look at who I was and it forced me to take a look at 
wow, if other people are perceiving me this way, then maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe I need to take a look at this anger that I have or this, you know, this rage inside of me. And I've talked a lot about this on my Peterisms videos and my vlogs that I didn't want, not specifically to that, but just that period, that I didn't want to be that person anymore. And I did a lot of inventory on it. And I really started doing a lot of practicing of, you know, prayer and meditation in the morning and gratitude lists and, and just practicing, you know, peaceful meditation so that I don't have to be that person today. I don't want to be that person today, you know? Um, so, you know, in retrospect, I'm not proud of that moment, but it was an opportunity for growth for me. You know, my sponsor, I've been sober for 27 years. I'm very active in a 12-step program. And my sponsor always says to me when I bring a situation like this to her, which she knows who Paige is, okay? Just let me just say, my sponsor has heard the name, Paige Christie. Um, but, and, and not in a negative way, in me doing inventory on her to take a look at what my part has been in my relationship with Paige and other people. And, um, you know, I mean, I, that was what was paramount to me because my sponsor always says to me, this is an opportunity for growth or are you, and are you going to take it? And that's exactly what she said to me at that time. This is an opportunity for growth. What are you going to do? You know? So, um, that for me was like a really, a, a good growing period for me. Um, I also want to say that in the last two years discussing all that, I have done like extensive inventory on, in my life. Like I have really taken a look not just on YouTube, but across the board of who I am in my life, who I was. You know, I always say, and I, I talk about a lot of people on here, and I say, I can't stand when they get in videos and they say, I don't know who that was. Well, I do know who that was, okay? I do know who I was three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. I'm not proud of that person. There are moments, okay, that I'm extremely proud of myself, but there are a lot of moments that I'm not. There are a lot of moments that I say, sit there and I look at that and I, I think to myself, why did you think there was anything right about this? And I have done extensive inventory. I sat over two nights with my sponsor and we did nine hours of inventory each night, okay, on taking a look at what my feelings were about these situations and what, mostly, what my part in what of that was and, and how I could work on it. Um, some of the drama channels I had actually done inventory on before, I wanna talk about that. I also, my husband and I were in marriage counseling for several years. We would go one, one time a week for marriage counseling and then every other week and like we went to two sessions a week and every other week one of us went for individual counseling during individual counseling i really took a look at this period of my life that i had had no emotional sobriety and emotional sobriety is who are you when you put the drink down who are you when you put the drug down right like i had no spiritual foundation in my life i had no emotional sobriety and so it's really like who are you this person and as a person that has no recovery in me and a person that isn't using drugs and alcohol, I'm an angry, mad SOB. I don't want to be that person, right? Like, I'm irritable, restless, and discontent, and I don't want to be that person. And I have worked so hard in the last two years, specifically. I mean, my whole sobriety, but there were periods where I just wasn't doing any work whatsoever. I've worked really, really hard in the last year, two years of trying to be the best version of myself. And I'm not a perfect example. I'm not. You know, I get comments from people who are like, oh, you're gatekeeping this. No, no I, I I don't think I'm any kind of perfect. I'm just one example, you know, and I say this all the time. I want the best for myself. I want the best for Paige. I want the best for you. I want us all to continue to grow. You know, who am I to stand in the way of somebody getting in a video and apologizing to people and taking ownership? Like if I were to be upset about that or to criticize that, then then I would be bringing the same thing on myself. And I want the best for all of us, you know? I really do. And and that was kind of a joke back in the day with all the drama channels. They were like, oh yeah, Peter thinks we're gonna all be like peaceful together. I did, I think, I thought that we could all get along, you know, that's what I wanted. So anyway, but I'm not proud of that live stream. And, um, and since she brought it up, I, I wanted to address that in there. Um, but the one thing that Paige did leave out, and, and I do want to address this because this is important to me, because I've had actually several people reach out to me and ask me about, like, did Paige ever make, uh, or uh, apologize to you? Did Paige ever address this with you? Did you ever address this with Paige? I've had, like, I've gotten emails about this literally up till just, like, the last month, in the last month. Somebody emailed me and said I wanted to know all this about, and I was like, I don't even respond to that, okay? Because that's between Paige and I, right? But because a lot of this was played out in the public forum, I do believe that people deserve a response to this. Um, but I'm not going to get into a private email, you know what I'm saying? So let me tell you what happened. Um, 
A couple years ago, I changed sponsors, talked a lot about it on my vlog. My sponsor is huge into inventory and improving yourself and not blaming your life on other people. She just isn't. She could care less about that. She's here for you, okay? And uh, you need to improve yourself and not be pointing to everybody else. So going into 2020, um, I did a lot of inventory on people that I owed amends to. And um, there were three people within the drama community that specifically that I owed amends to. Dustin Daly, Sam for Here for the Tea, and Paige Christie. And I reached out individually to each of them and asked them if I could make, in per like, in like on the phone, um, amends to them. Each one of them said yes. I was able to make amends to each of those people. Um, so, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, Paige, I just want you guys to know, without hesitation, I messaged her and I said, I think I had it because she had me blocked. I actually just looked and she unblocked me on Twitter. I was like, oh my God. Um, but uh, but I, um, I reached out to her, I think on like, you know, some other way. And I said, could we talk about this? And I had already talked to my sponsor and I had done my inventory about Paige with my sponsor and looked at my part on that. And I said, can I make amends to you? And she said, yes. And so... I called her up. We talked, I think it was like for an hour on the phone. And we, I feel like, had a pretty nice conversation. Now, I will tell you at one point, I started kind of like wanting to defend myself again. And Paige was like, well, wait a second. You called me to make a And I was like, you're right. You're right. Um, but, you know, she apologized to me for several things. And I was thankful for that. And I made amends to her. And she gave me that opportunity. And I really, really appreciate that. At that point... I felt like getting off the phone with Paige, um, I knew that I was, that Paige didn't love me. I knew that I wasn't like her favorite person, but I was okay with that. I was like, I've made amends. We've talked it out. We've heard each other's sides. Let's just move on. Let's move through this. We don't have to be best friends. You know, it was like Paige said in her video, will we ever be friends again? I don't know. The best thing that ever happened was that we weren't talking. And I thought that's such a mature response. And I don't think that people really understand what she meant by that. But it was like, at that time, I don't, think that Paige and I could have talked. Like, I think that there just was all this anger and resentment and animosity. And, you know, like I said, I don't have that today. You know, if Paige wants to reach out to me and talk to me, I'm, hey, I'll talk to you. Like, I don't, I don't have any issues. I don't have any issues with anybody. And I've really worked hard in the last couple of years of, you know, rectifying that and not being angry at anybody. And I don't have any issues with anybody in the drama community. I, I really don't. Like, if anybody wants to talk, reach out to me, you know, I, I'd love to talk to you, you know? Um, so Paige and I, had that conversation, and, and that was going into 2020. I really think that was like December or something. I don't, I have no idea when it was, so don't quote me on that. But that was around that time, and, um, and you know, I also wanted to say this. Um, you know, I already said that I wish her all the best, but like in the past year, I have on several occasions, and I don't know if she's aware of this or not, and um, I have said in talking to Rich Lux and Dustin Daly, hey, please tell Paige that I wish her the best. Because um, I don't, like, I, and, and I, the only reason I'm saying that is because I want this to be known that this is not just as a result of her making the video, which I appreciate the video, I really do, or my part of the video, because um, I don't, I'm not going to address the rest of that, that's between Paige and th those people, um, but I appreciate it, you know, and, um, and I just want her to know that I haven't wished her any ill will for quite some time, I really haven't, you know, uh, so that is about all of the Paige stuff, and then I'm going to say something at the end of that, but... That being said, I want to talk about the video that Paige put out. Now, let me tell you, my fear the last couple years in ever addressing this video was that if I talked about the video, then everybody was going to go run and watch the video. I'm past that at this point, okay? Um, Paige and I have had a conversation about this video. She referenced it um, when she was talking about how we talked and that she said that everything was factual in her video and that if I could disprove that by sending her information, then she would take down the video. Okay, so that was true. That conversation did occur. And I explained to her at the time what I'm going to explain to you. And there, I couldn't find the evidence. And if anybody can... Please, I would love for somebody to find the evidence because I cannot find the evidence. So Paige made this very lengthy video about me several years ago. And I think what part of it that hurt me was that um, there were several friendships in there that she discussed that at the time I was friends with those people. We had mended fences, and, several of them, and they were used as examples in the video of how I was this horrible person when they had played a part in that fallout of that relationship too. And I even reached out to some of those people and I said, could you tell Paige that we're good? And 
that never happened. And, and I'm fine with that today. I could care less, you know? It's like, whatever. Um, and I don't really have a lot of issues with the, the, vid the video today. Um, I do want to say about a couple things about the video that I think people don't know. Number one, the hardest, one of the hardest things about the video was sitting and watching my best friend watch that video. She um, just bawled her eyes out. And she was like, there's no truth to this video whatsoever. And you're just going to allow it to just sit there. And um, I lost 10 to 15,000 subscribers as a result of that video. Nobody knows this except for Paige and my close friends. Um, I did tell Paige this. Her response at the time that we talked when I made amends to her was, that's on you. Um, but I lost a book deal with that. I lost my book contract with my publisher as a result of that video because so many people were sending messages and emails to my publisher that my publisher said, I can't work with you anymore. Um, I'm sorry, but this is, it's just, it's detrimental. And um, so I lost um, a book contract, which was one of my biggest dreams. It opened other doors down the road. I found a literary agent down the road that was amazing. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but that was as a result of that video. Um, and what was hard about that for me was that there was very little truth in the video. Um, so let me explain to you, and I want to make sure that I just review my notes really quick so that I don't um, forget anything. The, the, the number one thing that hurt the most was that I received so many comments from people saying that they were disappointed in me and that they were unsubscribing. The, that word hurt on a level that I can't even explain to you, the, the word disappointment. And it was all mostly surrounding the situation where... Paige had talked about my career working in a treatment facility. Now, I have to tell you, it's very surreal that I'm making this video today, okay? Because this week is 14 years to the week that I left working in treatment. And I worked at a treatment facility for 13 years. I worked there for just, I think it was like three months shy of 13 years. Um, I started in 1995 and I left in 2008. Um, and then... Three months after that, my mom passed away, and it was just like this huge period of change in my life. When I worked in treatment, I started off as a tech. Um, I worked my way up, and I became, um, while I was getting my master's degree, so I want to make this very, very clear, because in Paige's video, she um, alludes to the fact that I had no skills or talents or abilities to work as a psychotherapist or a counselor in this treatment facility, okay? So I wanna clear up some things because this has never been discussed. I have never defended myself to this and let me explain to you why. Is that my next thing on here? Um, yes, let me explain to you why I didn't do this. So at the time, I talked to my sponsor. We talked about it at length and I was like, back in the day, I was very reactionary, okay? Today, I'm more responsive. I have learned don't just sit down and jump on video. Think it through, write down some notes, do, be prepared, think about how you wanna present this. So I talked to my sponsor about this and she said, there's no way for you to respond to this video without bringing in the treatment facility, your supervisors and all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, but I can just share my story. And she goes, it's on, it's on you, you can do it. She was like, but for you to give absolute 100% evidence, you would have to have like your supervisor sitting down with you and then they're still not gonna believe the story. And I was like, you know, she's right. And she said, I think for you, it would just be best if you let it go. And I was like, okay, so for three years I've let it go. And I have really moved through that pain of not even, I don't know, just having people believe that about me, you know? When I had a 13 year career working in a treatment facility, I had a long career that I'm very proud of. I was very proud of that career. I worked really, really hard. The treatment team that I was part of was one of the best treatment teams in the Midwest. Um, I, I loved working there. And, um, you know, I started as a tech and I worked my way up. I became a counselor in training. And then um, while I was getting my master's degree, um, since I have no skills, here's my master's degree from Indiana University, School of Social Work, Master's of Social Work, right here. You can see it says May 9th of 1999. Here's my social work, master's of social work degree. Um, so I worked, while I was getting my master's degree, I was kind of like a liaison between um, the treatment facility and the Department of Corrections. I worked with probation officers and judges, prob probation departments, parole officers. And what I did was I went around to probation offices, parole offices, and I did assessments 
jails, institutions, all kinds of stuff. Um, I did um, assessments to evaluate whether somebody was appropriate for our treatment program for a long-term program for like six months to two years. Um, and that was what I did for the two years that I was um, getting my master's degree. Then when I got my master's degree, I became a counselor. And um, so I want to show you here. I'm not going to show you guys the front because it has the name of the facility on it. But here is the back of my badges. You can see this is my old badge. And then I have my other two badges. And then I have the, because it was a locked facility, but you can walk out whenever you want it. But I have my, uh, right there that would open the door. I'm going to show you on here somewhere where it says my name and counselor. I have two separate pictures. Um, with my name and counselor. I think the first one is my first picture that I had as a counselor and the second one is my second one. Um, so I want to explain one thing about this whole counselor situation. I was a counselor for a very, very long time, okay? Uh, I was a residential counselor. I was an inpatient counselor. I was an aftercare counselor. I was a counselor in training. I was a counselor for a very, very long time. Um, and at the time, there were a lot of probation departments that would ask us to use the term psychotherapist. Um, and so counselor and psychotherapist were interchangeable at that time. Now, I want to tell you, because I pulled this up, because I did this a long time ago, and I did it again today. Um, I looked up here on several different definitions when you look up, and it says, what exactly does a psych psychotherapist do? A psychotherapist uses talk therapy to treat people for emotional problems and mental illnesses. Depending on what degree and specialty, specialty they get, psychotherapists can be psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, or social workers, okay? They can work with individuals, couples, groups, or families. And I was a social worker, and that was what we did. At the time that I worked in treatment, okay, and this is where it gets tricky because there was some issue that said something about licensure. I have never in my life on YouTube ever said that I had licensure in the state of Indiana for anything. And she showed an acupuncture degree um, in the video. And let me explain this, okay? At the place that I worked, we did AccuDetox. To do AccuDetox, which is um, an acupuncture treatment, I am no longer licensed to do this. I don't do it anymore. I only did it when I worked there. Um, it's a form of relaxation and detoxing. And um, to do it, you had to be trained and have licensure in the state of Indiana. That was the only licensure that I ever had, okay? I never had any other licensure. I never claimed to have any other licensure. What I did say was that I was a psychotherapist because those terms were interchangeable at that time. When I worked in treatment, um, and anybody that has worked in social work for 20 or 30 years will know that this is true in the state of Indiana, if you work in the state of Indiana. At that time, if you were underneath a doctor, a psychiatrist, or somebody that had an LCSW, you did not have to have licensure. And when I worked in treatment, actually, for a very long time, until literally the year that I left, they discouraged us getting licensure, okay? Because they would have to pay us more if we had licensure. The year that I left was when they changed that. At that time, I went into private practice. At that time, to be in private practice, you did not have to be licensed, okay? You could be a non-licensed clinician working underneath a supervisor. I had two separate supervisors that I worked with. What happened was that the law changed. And at, the, at that time, the law said that you could no longer be a non-licensed clinician, even under a supervisor, doing private practice. What happened at that time? I changed my practice to a life coaching practice, which in the state of Indiana, you do not have to have licensure to be a life coach in the state of Indiana, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you my card. Here's my card, and um, here's the back of it, which is a quote from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, but I'm gonna flash up here to show you guys. At the top, it says life coach and author, okay? And these would have been made around, I don't know, 2014, 2013 when I started, well, 2014, because that was when I started working on my book. Um, um, and I don't have my previous life coaching um, cards from before that. So I am no longer in practice. I mean, I haven't been in practice for many, many years, okay? And, um, but I wanted to address all that because that was really, really important to me. What Paige wanted when I talked to her was the, the paperwork to show when that law changed in the state of Indiana from the, because I explained all this to her and she said, if you can send me paperwork, I will retract the video, I'll take the video down and I'll retract the statement, which I felt like was fair. The problem was I couldn't find on any website or anything. I have friends of mine that 
literally sit on the state licensing board and they're like, Peter, we cannot find anywhere where it says on such and such date this changed. I have looked all over YouTube, or not YouTube, I have looked all over Google, I have searched this time and time again, and I cannot find it. So if anybody can find it, please email it to me and let me have it because I would love to have that piece of information. So that was what happened with my career. There was it was at the end. Okay, so at that time um, that the video came out, there was a lot of conversation about the fact that I use this term psychotherapist, like I said, right? So, um, you know, for me, those terms were always interchangeable between a psychotherapist and a counselor. Today, that would be frowned upon, okay? With the necessity of having to have licensure, that would be completely frowned upon. But back then, being underneath a licensed professional, a doctor, a physician, or a psychiatrist, um, that was completely appropriate and 100% okay. Um, in fact, I found on here this uh, article and it was called, what is the difference between a psychotherapist and a clinical psychologist? And so I want to read this to you. It says, psychotherapist is an is an umbrella term. One of the biggest differences between these two professions is that one is an umbrella term while the other is a very specific profession. A clinical psychologist is a very clinical, very specific profession. Confusion between the two is common and has led to uh, some people seeking help from the wrong professional. A psychotherapist is an umbrella term, meaning all clinical psychologists, along with other psychology professionals, can put themselves under this term. A psychotherapist is a name that given that is given to professionals who provide therapy to clients, which is what I was doing at that time, working in treatment, and later having a private practice where I was underneath a supervisor. The minute that that changed, okay, which I think I was notified like in September that that was changing in December or changing like January 1st of the following year. The minute that that changed, the second that that changed, I changed my practice to a life coaching practice. I went to all of my clients and I said, I have to change my practice. Here's what I'm doing, blah, 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 blah whatever and I changed it. And the reason that I didn't seek out licensure at that point was because I really didn't think that I was going to be in practice much longer. I was kind of at the end. I kind of was like, I don't really want to do this anymore. I really wanted to work in writing. I wanted to work for a publishing house or I wanted to publish books on a regular basis, something like that. But I was kind of done. And so that was the reason why I didn't seek out licensure at that point and turned it over to life coaching. The other thing is this, um, is at that point, I was seeing so many people that in treatment and out of treatment that were court ordered, that there were a lot of people that didn't have a huge desire to seek out, you know, any kind of counseling, whatever, um, if they weren't court ordered. And the life coaching, what it allowed me to do was work with people to accomplish their dreams, which was so cool to me because I was working with people that were wanting to write books or wanting to change careers or that were wanting to do this. And it was completely something different. And it was very, very cool to me and very exciting. And um, so, yeah. But anyway, I wanted to address that on here because this has been something that's like, I called my friend today and I said, what do you think? And she said, I think that you, it, it'll it'll give you closure. She's like, this is something that you've been wanting to talk about for three years. She's like, it'll give you closure. And she said, and there's gonna be people out there that are still not gonna believe it. And she's like, and that's okay. But she's like, you've said your piece. And you know, my sponsor said the same thing. So to that, I have to say, I'm thankful that Paige made this video and the, the most recent video and um, gave me an opening or an opportunity to talk about this today. Um, so I think I've talked about all of this on here. Have I, I want to go through this, my notes to make sure um, if I've talked about everything. Yeah, talked about everything. Oh, one thing I did want to talk about was on the video that Paige um, made, she used a website on there that listed my credentials and had a phone number and things like that. And um, that website was never a website that I ever used for advertising whatsoever. And I, I said that to Paige on there. The, the phone number that was associated with that website, because I looked it up, um, I had never, I didn't even know what that phone number was. And um, I even contacted the website and there was, or tried to contact the website. There was like no place that you could even tell them that you wanted to take it down. It was a phishing website. And so what that means is like when your information is out there, like your address or whatever, they just like put it on all these different websites. And I said that to Paige and she said, oh, I know. She goes, but it added validity to my video. I said, so you knew that this was a phishing. You knew that that, what, that, that website wasn't associated with me, but you put it in there yet anyway. And she goes, yeah, it, it added legitimacy to my video. I was like, okay. I said, Paige, I can't even get that information taken down off of there. It's inaccurate, and I can't on that website. Like, there was no way to contact that website to have them take the information down. So I just wanted to say that because there was a lot of information about, or there was a lot of question about the website and the video and all this kind of stuff. 
So there was that. Um, hold on a second. Do, 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 do. So yeah, so that's the end of all of that. That felt good. Finally get all that out. Anyway, um, you know, in regards to Paige and all this kind of stuff, I just want to say, Paige, I wish you all the best. I appreciate you addressing this in the video today. Um, she was like, you know, maybe he hates me. I don't hate you, girl. I don't hate you at all. I wish you all the best. Um, your children are beautiful. I'm glad that your marriage is very happy. As a happily married person, I want the same for everybody else. You seem happy. Your kids are beautiful. Um, I'm glad that you're thriving in your life. And um, I only want the best for people. I, you know, <laughs> the drama community, like the new ones that are up and rising, bless you. Bless you, okay? Us OGs, and I do consider Paige an OG. Us OGs from back in the day, we went through a lot. We really did. There was a lot of infighting, and I don't want that anymore. I just don't. I don't want to be any part of that, right? And um, so, you know, I wish anybody the best. And um, <laughs> do I ever think it'll be this super peaceful community where we're all hanging out at summer camp singing songs? Probably not. But I can always hope. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that at least I think that we can all get along and be civil in the same space where we're doing something that we're all passionate about. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.